Dudes, what's happening, man? This is Trent, and today I got a special guest. This is Bin of Trash. She's got a YouTube channel uh, uh, here on YouTube as well, and I actually asked her to do a commission of Twilight Monk, and so he, she's here to uh, to talk about it with us. So welcome, uh, Amy. How are you? Yeah, I am good, and hello. I feel like I'm just waving my hand around for no oh, reason. I, I, I didn't have the video part on. Oh, hey, there you are. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> So it's great to see you. I'm glad we were able to sync up our time schedules. You're all the way over on the other side of the planet. So I do certainly appreciate you uh, giving us a little bit of your time to just talk about your process of how you went about doing this uh, Twilight Monk drawing. So uh, to dig right into it, I noticed your initial sketches are super like loose. Uh, can you talk a little bit about like your, your initial thought process of how you get that idea in your mind to paper? Are you thinking about, do you already have an idea of what that, that's gonna be shaped like? Or are you kind of going on the fly? Um, I think most of it was, it's kind of a bit of, mo uh, a bit of both. So, um, cause this one was kind of like a lucky dip commission where I could kind of pick and choose what I wanted to do. So I was to start with, I was trying to think of like a pose I could do, but then I was like, I kind of want to animate it. So I'd have to pick a pose that I could animate afterwards. So all of the action poses didn't really work for animating. Otherwise I'd have to animate it would feel like I'd have to animate something that would like catch at the end of the action pose. So it wouldn't really feel as fluid. Yeah. You wanted so, like an idol or something. Yeah. yeah. So I opted for a little bit more of a just standing kind of pose that I could use. Yeah. But I, I really liked those sketches. So I kind of decided, okay, you know, I'm just going to try and use this later. You used them. You used them anyway, <laughs> later in the image. Yeah. And I noticed you, with your process, so it's almost like you've got that gesture and then you back that off to another layer and then you do your line art over the top of that. It's still pretty loose yeah. when you start to add color flats. Yeah, kind of. Um, there was another artist that I really liked um, and he uses basically like he, he calls painting more like sculpting. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, he'll just paint over the top and he'll just start sort of sculpting away at it. And I kind of find that a little bit easier. So I'll just kind of blob things wherever I need them and then move them around until it kind of looks like the shape I want. When you say sculpting, uh, you mean like you're laying down like blobs of a, a darker value and then like pulling out highlights? Or what do you mean when you say sculpting? I guess kind of trying to make it look as 3D as possible. So you're kind of you're figuring out where I guess all of the... Um, the three D aspects would be like where it would be darker and whatnot, and then add in my shadows and stuff again later because mm -hmm. I tend to when I start painting, I tend to accidentally kind of ease off my shadows a little bit more than I'd like to, mm -hmm. um, or I put too much highlights in where I don't quite need them. Mm -hmm. So then I have to fix it later by adding extra lighting in or um, adjusting the hues and everything. Yeah, I noticed you get a little bit of color in your shadows too. Can you talk like a little bit about how you lay down your shadows? Because it looked like you did a layer with with all like a flat, almost black, and then you set that to like a multiply layer and then drop the opacity and erase out. Is that accurate? Yeah, so what I did with um, that one, I found out recently, um, but I put down, generally it's like a, either a blue or a purple. I'll put that on multiply and then lower the opacity on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then I'll lock it, and wherever I want the sun hitting it, um, or like whether it's on skin or wherever, I'll um, start using a color I want that's a bit warmer. Mm -hmm. So I'll start like putting a gradient just on like where the skin is. I'll make it pink instead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it starts giving me gradients of different color um, on it. So then I'll have uh, like all of the the really like shadowy parts will look more blue and tinted, but. Um, and all of the, I guess the, the brighter parts, like the skin, where I want it to more pop, I start using things like pink or yellow because it'll just kind of grab that really warm hue immediately. So it kind of just separates the two a little bit easier. At what point do you start to like go, okay, uh, now that like everything's laid out, now it's time to like paint on another layer on top of all that? Or do you ever do that? And do you plan for animation in this phase of the process? Um, I kind of already knew what I could animate for that pose specifically. So when I was sketching the poses out was when I was figuring out if I could animate that one afterwards. So is that um, scarf on like another layer this early in the painting or do you do no. that after? <laughs> yeah, I did that all afterwards. I'm just like, okay, okay I'm just going to paint it first. And I'm like, then I can just cut it up okay. and do it later. Okay. Um, but you know, I, I definitely, uh, 
kind of think about what I what I can animate during the sketch process for that one because otherwise it kind of gets a little bit more confusing later on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what was the other question? My oh, the question was: At what point do you like? Do you worry about how many layers you're using? And at what point do you kind of go, okay, so those are the layers with the line art, the shadows, and the the basic lighting. Oh, right. And then you do another layer on top of that where you're just you are just rendering, you're just painting on top of everything. Um, I don't think I worry too much about the layers. Uh, okay. So after I put down my shadow layer, which has like all of the different colors that I want on it. It's when I'll start painting on the layer just above that one. But okay. once I've got like the the fundamentals of, of I guess, where I want everything mm-hmm. and I want to start moving things around, I kind of just select the area I want to move, mm-hmm. copy and paste the entire section so that it comes as one new flat layer, mm-hmm. move it where I want, and then either merge it with the layer underneath or just accidentally paint on that layer and keep going. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Do you – do you uh... Do you do a lot of tutorials on your YouTube channel, like where you talk about how you go about the process of animating using uh, the timeline in Photoshop? Um, I think I've done one or two uh, quite a while ago, but none that are more recent, which okay. is something I probably need to do at some point. Yeah. So um, I think that for anybody out there who's interested in learning to do some animations, it uh, might be a good idea to check out Bin's channel. Uh, it's really great to see you. And uh, thank you so much for doing this commission of Twilight Monk. I hope, I, have you read the book yet? But I've been, I've been dying to draw this character for so long. Really? Well, you did a couple of yeah. sketches years ago on Twitter. And uh, in fact, yeah, that's, I know. that's when I first noticed your artwork, actually. Um, and that's, I think, a really good tip. You, one of the things you're really awesome at, I think, is... Uh, community. You're very active with the people who follow your channel and follow your artwork. I think you give a lot of feedback. And also you do a lot of fan art. I think I do less fan art nowadays. But if I really like delve into a fandom, I draw too much. But not just the popular stuff, though. You you yeah. draw fan art of other Twitter artists' characters. I've been trying to do more of that myself to like point people in the direction of other passionate indie creators that I could help. You know what I mean? And that kind of goes yeah. around in a circle that that helps out the whole community of really passionate, creative people who are just trying to do an indie thing to share it with with each other. You know. So I oh, learn so I learn cool. from you all the time is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Uh, about that because I'm a social kind of a social I'm, I'm a social weirdo I, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not particularly I think, good I think at we it. all are it comes with like the artist tag is we, we all just we, we don't we want to talk to each other but we just don't want to talk to each other yeah yeah and also sometimes I think uh one of the key things that I got from you was like thinking about like how can I how can I really help another creator that's part of why I wanted to start doing a lot more of these where I'm like uh, hiring other pe- other artists to do some commissions of Twilight Monk. It's good for everybody, really. So yeah. So dudes, look at this. Look at this piece. This is so awesome. I'm so glad that I was able to get Amy to do this drawing and that she would put the time in to do all the cool animations and such. It got me inspired, and I created the character. There's just something really magical about adding a little bit of animation to a character like this. So uh, I want to definitely pursue like reaching out to more people, uh, YouTubers and and other people uh, to do some Twilight Monk art and then feature them here on the YouTube channel as well and maybe dig a little bit into their process uh, as well. If you've got some Twilight Monk fan art, tag me over on Twitter, man. Who knows? Maybe you'll be my next commission. All right, dudes, that's it for me on this one. I will catch y'all next time. Bye. I said it wrong. I blew my own outro. Until next time, dudes, I'll catch y'all on the bond and ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.